All right, so we applied multiple filters and now we want to add some buttons here to remove those filters. And before doing that, I'm going to bring back this mic listings so we have more to work with. There we go, we have mics listings. So right now, mic listings are selected and we want to have a button that says mic, for example. So let's close the database and go to our home component. So in this div where we have the filters, we want to include those buttons. Let me add some classes first. So we will have flex, items, center, and some gap. And what we want to do here is the opposite of our functions, like search, select user, and select tag. Because at the moment, when we select a user or a tag, for example, we are just adding that to the parameters of the URL. And with these buttons, we just want to remove them. So let's use a link component because we want to submit this through an HTTP request or a GET request. And for the text, we can say params tag, for example, or search. And for the user, we need to do a bit more work and we will get to it. So let's add the href for now. And also we need to make this conditional because if there is no tag, then we cannot render a tag here. So let's just say v if params.tag. And remember, we have access to these params because in the previous video, we declared it up here. So this is just the URL parameters. Now, if we go back to our website and go back to the home page and clear the filters, we don't have anything. But if I select a tag, then we have it up here. And when I click on it, I want to remove it. This can be done through a function just like this search function, or we can do it in line through this href. So we can bind this to the route function again and submit this to the same page, which is home page, and then send the payload as a second argument in this route function. Similar to the router function from inertia, this route function, which is part of Ziggy, can also take a payload as a second argument. So if I pass an object in here and let's say new tag and I will set it to for example my tag like this just to show you what happens when we click on this so if I go back and click on this game tag you notice we have a new tag that is set to my tag so we are able to manipulate the URL parameters now since this is removing this particular parameter so we can grab it in this case it's tag we want to set it to null so very simple, but this is not complete. So again, if I select, for example, dev, we have four results. If I select it again, we are back to the same results. But the problem comes in when we have multiple tags, again, much like the functions. So if I have, for example, John as the user and then select biz as the tag, so I have two filters, right? If I want to remove this by clicking on it, then I remove everything. So this is where destructuring that parameters will come in handy. So in this object, I can use the spread operator and use params and say include whatever is in the parameters, but change the tag to null. So just by adding this. Now, if we do this again, let's select John and then biz. So we have four results. If I remove the tag, I still keep the user ID and I can see the results that belong to John. Now, again, we need to be careful with the page parameter. So again, if I select John and this time I select game, so I have two pages and I go to page two and then I remove this game and I stay on page two. So this can be a problem if there was no page two. Now, this might be a rare occasion because we are adding more results, but we don't want to take risks. So we want to say include whatever parameters, but reset the tag as well as the page. So we will set the page to null as well. So now if I do it again, so I select John and then game and I go to page two. So I have page in the URL and I remove this tag. Then I am back to page one, but I keep the user. Essentially, this is what we need to do for each link. Now let's style this a bit better. So first, I'm gonna put these on different lines. Then I'm going to include an icon here. So this is again from Font Awesome, and this is just an X mark. If I select a tag, here we have it. Now on the link itself, I want to add some classes. So we have some padding left and right and top and bottom, rounded corners, background, text white, item center with some gap. And here is our tag. So if I click on this, it's gone. Now we just want to repeat this for search and user. So let's copy this whole link and paste it underneath. And this time we want to look for search. So let's say if there is a search, then 
make the same request but this time instead of cleaning the tag clean the search parameter and the rest is going to be the same and of course for the content we would use the search term so now back to our website if I select a tag, we have it. If I search for something, let's say this, we have that one as well. We need to add some space here, of course. So did I forget that? Yes. So this needs to be gap. There we go. And the only thing is left is user. And I said the user needs a bit more work because we actually don't have the username. We have the user ID. So if I duplicate this link and say, if there is a user ID, then include it. And of course, we want to set the user ID to null when we click on it. Then we will see just a number and that's not very user friendly, but it works. So if I delete these, you can see one by one, for example, I want to select John's listings that has the game tag. And but now I changed my mind. I don't want only John's. I want all the listings with game tag. So I will keep game. But now Mike is included so I can select that guy and it works. So the only thing is left is to grab the username instead of this number. And we can do that on the front end. So in this component, using some JavaScript methods, we can extract the username. And for that, let's create a username right before form. So we can say const username, and we will set this to a ternary operator. So first we want to check if our user ID exists in the URL parameters. If that's true, then we will grab our listings so prop listings that data that is the array with all the actual data and we want to find something in that array so this is a javascript method that will take a callback function and we will say for example i or l doesn't matter so the iteration and this iteration will represent each object in that array so we know each object has a user ID parameter and we want to say if that user ID is the same as params dot user ID then we have found a listing that belongs to that user whose user ID is in the URL so this will give us the first listing with the user ID matching the user ID in the parameters and we want to select the user object within that listing and grab the name but if that is not correct we would simply return null so this is what we need to do, but there's a very tiny problem and this is here. So this parameter is a string, but our user ID from the listing is a number. And since we are using triple equal sign, that means we will get an error for unmatched type. So we can simply fix that by wrapping this with a number. So we are casting this as a number and then we are doing the check. So all we have to do now, just use this username. Let's go back to this link where we have params user ID and we can use username. Now let's go back to our website, give it a reload. There we go. We have Mike. If I deselect it, then it's gone. If I select John, then we have the user ID. But of course, the name is in the tags. So everything works properly. We can filter by tag name. We can filter by username. We can even filter by a specific phrase. For example, that QUI. Again, we have a lot of results that has that particular phrase in it, but we can change that with anything just by adding multiple filters. So if I go to page two, we still have those filters. If I don't want a particular filter, I can simply remove it and then we keep the rest. So we can easily delete and add filters now. And we are done with our index function of our listing controller. So basically our homepage. And we actually covered a lot through this one function. We covered some advanced filtering and pagination and returning different results based on different criteria. So in the future videos, we will cover the other methods in our listing controller. So creating, showing, updating, and destroying a listing. So I hope you're enjoying this series so far and I'll catch you at the next ones. Thanks for watching.